Hello and welcome. So what we're going to be showing in this video is how Automate can integrate with Windows Virtual Desktop and greatly ease the transition to the WVD platform and give your IT admins, your consultants, and really your end users confidence uh, that they're going to have the best possible experience on the WVD platform. Coming from an end user computing background for many years, one of the hardest things to do is to provide a consistent end user experience from giving them the same experience that they have on their physical PCs to what they're experiencing on the virtual desktops. If they don't have that same experience or better, it's a project doomed to fail. With Automate, it really sets itself apart from the competitive solutions around load testing because it does custom workflows and it does custom workflows with ease. So what we're gonna be showing in this video is really focused on that, is showing a end user workflow we're going to record that end-user workflow, show how it can easily be imported into the Scenario Builder platform. We'll show how to edit that workflow. Once it's edited, we'll then send it off to our controller, and that controller will allow us to conduct multiple tests and different scenarios based on whatever that specific need that we're looking to do. But we're going to be focused on a, a specific test, just 10 users to start. That will allow us to show you how the product works. And then from there, what we'll do is talk through testing scenarios, how to handle failures during testing, and then we'll wrap things up talking about the value add for Windows Virtual Desktop. And now you can transition these same workflows over to Automate's continuous availability testing functionality for your Windows Virtual Desktop and remote app workloads. All right, before we get into Scenario Builder, I want to show you the demo environment that we built for this video. We're on the latest 2020 spring release of Windows Virtual Desktop. We have a single host pool, which we're going to show here, that has two Windows 10 multi-session desktops. So you can see here we have our host pool. We're set up for two session hosts. Each of these are running Windows 10 multi-session on the latest release. Let's take a look here at the host pool. You can see that we have a max of five users per desktop that we're allowing. And we have the breath first load balancing method configured on our pool. Now, if you take a look at our users, you can see we have no users connected and that's because we didn't conduct the load test. So let's get started and take a look at Scenario Builder. All right, let's get into the good stuff. So now we're gonna record an end user workflow using Scenario Builder. And when we're doing this, we're actually performing the real steps that an end user would take as they're conducting their normal business workflow for the day, right? So in this case, they're launching their Windows 10 virtual desktop. They're gonna log in with their credentials. And the cool thing about this is what Automate is doing in the background as an image-based solution is it's starting to understand what the user is doing. It's taking those mouse clicks, it's taking the keystrokes, it's looking where the user is actually clicking on and it's taking screen captures and it's using computer vision to record that. So that way it can then put this all into an easily understood workflow that will be imported into Scenario Builder, which you'll see here uh, when this is all done. So in this case, during the test, we're just gonna go ahead and open up WordPad and we'll then type a document. So this is simulating what a real end user would do. And what's neat about this is when you think about the benefits for you know how this helps with the transition of Windows Virtual Desktop, you got to think about you know using custom workflows just like we're doing here. You know traditional uh, competitor solutions that are on the market are really based off of you know custom scripting languages and things like that. It's not quick and easy onboarding based on end user workflows that allow you to simulate those workflows and emulate those end users, which help you right size your Azure instances, which is super important and helps with cost savings and ensuring that you have a consistent experience. So now the user is searching Bing images for working from a pool, because that's what they're doing. They're really excited about their Windows Virtual Desktop and they want to work from a pool and they want to show their boss that this is possible and capable to do this with the Windows Virtual Desktop platform. Of course, only when powered by Automate. So if you look here, we go ahead and paste that image in as the end user, of course. And while this is all happening, Automate, again, is capturing uh, the keystrokes, any kind of mouse movements, images that are clicked on, mouse coordinates, movements, that sort of stuff. And it's all happening from the end user perspective, because Automate always runs from that user's point of view. So once you're done with the workflow, you'll just simply come over here and hit stop. And then you'll notice that that entire workflow is imported into an easy to read fashion again this is that no code fashion that we spoke about uh, which is really graphical driven easy to use easy to manipulate and if you look here you can see images so when the gentleman was on the pool uh, we capture those images we capture those mouse coordinates and that's all kind of captured in this flow so what we're going to do is we're going to pause and show you what a, a edited script looks like all right we just finished recording a end user workflow 
which took us from logging into the Windows Virtual Desktop to walking through kind of a standard, you know, business process that an end user might do. Obviously, ours was a little bit, you know, fun joking around about working from home. But the goal is to kind of show how we can take you through an end user process and capture that back in a scenario builder, which is what you're seeing here as a workflow. You can have multiple workflows that are basically compacted into a single uh, scenario and that's kind of gives you that building block approach so maybe that one user has different job functions and we basically take those and compile them into a single scenario so what we did was we stopped the stopped the recording and came back in kind of showing you what a script would look like as we kind of tweaked it so using the scenario recorder we can get you about you know 80 percent uh, if not a little bit more there uh, to completion but the thing is you know things need to be tweaked uh, when you're actually doing the scenario you're going to realize uh, when you're doing a scenario for a single user and doing a workflow for a single user and you're playing that back now and you start ramping that up to 50, 100 users, uh, you know, things start to, to change. Timing starts to change. System gets a little bit slower. So that so the script requires a few different iterations uh, to get it to be uh, pristine. So what we did and, and not only that, I mean, sometimes some images need to be tweaked and some of the different um, components, maybe a click was a little bit off. So the cool thing is when the scenario is actually imported into Scenario Builder, it's imported in a no code fashion, right? You can look, it's completely GUI driven that make it very user friendly. So if you look at just kind of walking down on Scenario Builder, we can see here that we have uh, an application section that allows you to you know, start applications, close applications. You can do transaction timing because maybe you want to determine how long is it taking for a specific application to launch. And then what does that look like trended out over when you're launching multiple sessions uh, across different session hosts, what does that look like? You know, you'll be able to do that and, and measure that as well. I mean, you can run different commands, open URLs, and then you can play a script, which that basically means you're nesting another script inside of what you already have as this particular scenario, uh, which is kind of neat there. Or you can play specific sections of the script. If you look at images, you have the ability to click on an image, find specific images, find text using OCR within those images. Uh, so, or take an automated screenshot. I think that's a pretty neat uh, function as well. We have keyboard functions, so we can actually emulate keys being pressed, mouse movements, uh, hit, you know, control different window aspects. So look for, you know, controls and windows or different window headings. And from there, you can manipulate that window. Uh, Excel functions, password functions. And then this is kind of, if you want to get more advanced in the script, you have the ability to actually do control functions. You know, if if then else statements, case statements, switch statements, things like that, be able to create labels where you can jump between the different scripts. You also have the ability to do variables, right? So when you start doing and you're doing things, to give you an example where you're load testing across, let's say, you know, a thousand, two thousand desktops and you want to emulate different user accounts, different use cases, you can put those into a CSV format and basically read those in as variables and different inputs for the application as variables. It makes it very friendly. This is a high level overview of, of Scenario Builder and kind of the, the functions and what you can actually do with it, features and functionalities. This was not by any means a deep dive as each of these features can be uh, can be dove in uh, to to give you additional um, you know capabilities and how this sort of stuff works. One of the things that I really like though, I just do just want to cover is you have the ability to select aspects of the script and then you can basically play from position or play selected steps and they really slick debugging features which are required uh, for troubleshooting. So the next step is to just send the scenario over to the controller. And after that, we are ready to start our load test. Okay, just to recap, we recorded the scenario. We then sent the scenario over to the controller so we can actually create our load test or what we call our test plan. So to create a new test plan, we'll call it uh, WVD test two. Uh, and there's a lot of settings in here. I'm not going to go through all the settings. And, and this is very specific to the use case and the type of test that you're trying to do. Uh, and this is very specific to, to you know, app loader. Um, but for purposes of what we're showing right now, we're going to go ahead and select your injector. We'll choose steady state time. That means we're going to run the test uh, for, you know, let's say 20 minutes, no matter what. And then depending on how long the iteration is of my test that I recorded or my scenario, it will run it X amount of times for the duration of 20 minutes. Injectors will be, the, an injector basically launches those actual sessions which are simulating end users. So in the case of wanting to launch, let's say 200 users, maybe I get 50 users in an injector. I'll have four injectors here. The number of users per injector really depends on the resources that you have assigned to the injector. And you can trend that out based on, you know, testing that you do on the injectors uh, or performance testing, right? So in this case, we have one for just a demo video. We're going to go ahead and choose our demo video that, or de demo scenario that we recorded. 
we're going to go ahead and launch 10 users. So those are 10 users that are simulating end user workflow. And we'll give it, you know, one second. Or one user is going to launch every 10 seconds. And then it'll kind of throw in the variable of five seconds from a pacing standpoint. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, save here. So we'll basically save our scenario. Would you like to review the execution plan? What this shows is this is basically showing what the user is, uh, what user is launching, what host are they launching from, from an injector perspective, and um, when they actually launch. Once you have that, I'll say, do you want to go ahead and uh, run the load test? Uh, so in this case, I'll go ahead and hit yes. And as soon as I hit yes, it's going to go ahead and run the load test. So I'll say load test number two. Uh, when I hit submit, it's going to go ahead and send that uh, those commands over to the injector, and then you'll see the test run. So what you're seeing here are the users that were launched and ready to go to start playing the test. Now these accounts are actually local, uh, but you can use domain accounts to automate uh, the launching of sessions as well. These are called R users, and this is the R user manager, which essentially will launch on each of those uh, injectors. So in this case, there's it'll, it'll say at the top one to twenty five. If I had 50 on this server, I'd have two RU managers, each with 25 sessions each, and you'd be able to see those on there. So as you can see, the tests are starting to play across uh, so far one, two, and three, and it's doing exactly what we recorded as the end user. And so the workflow that was created here can actually be created multiple times and played back against multiple uh, multiple session hosts to uh, to simulate uh, real user load, which essentially would give you an idea of kind of you know right help to right size your environment. And the great thing about this is the same workflow that you see here can actually be used in the continuous availability testing. So not only are you doing load testing, but this same workflow can constantly play back multiple times for each of your session hosts, which then would tell you if your environment is up or down. And if there is an issue, you'll notice uh, when these sessions actually fail, uh, you'll be able to see them inside of AppLoader for any failed screenshots. It'll actually take a screenshot of the actual failure message. So you can actually see as these failures start happening, you can start seeing them come up. It'll show you a, uh, where the actual failure happened. In this case, is the edge icon, uh, the session didn't have it. Uh, so we're able to see that. And, and that same functionality is there for the continuous availability testing. So that's it. So one of the things, so that's going to continue playing uh, multiple times. But one of the cool things that you'll see here under the uh, under session hosts, you can actually see the session start coming in live. And they're being load balanced across each of them. Uh, so when we do hit our, our max number, it'll, it'll fail out. And that's it. All right. Well, thank you for hanging. Hopefully that was a good overview for you. Again, super high level, but it gave you kind of an idea of where Automate sets itself apart from the com competition, how it can help easily transition users over to Windows Virtual Desktop, ensure consistent performance, consistent availability with the continuous monitoring uh, aspect of the product. Remember, as we stated before, the continuous availability monitoring aspect of the product is taking that same real end user workflow and constantly playing that back. So it's not just testing the availability of that application or the desktop, ensuring that it's able to launch, it's actually testing the workflow and validating that the features and functionalities and business process work within that application. That's super key and that's really what sets Automate apart. So thank you for hanging, watching this high level demo and how Automate integrates with WBD can enhance the platform. So thank you again and look forward to, uh, to hearing from you and working on further integrations. Thanks.